Carrying books is not my strong point. <gasps> oh my god. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I will be talking to you guys about all the books that I read in April. So if you only want to hear me talk about the books that I read in April, just click to this time in the video to see me only talk about the books that I finished in April. But before I'm gonna talk about that, I just have to say, guys, these past two to three weeks have been insane. The amount of love, support, and just new following that I have gotten, I cannot wrap my head around it. It's just really, really crazy. I've made so many new friends. Probably a lot of you guys who are watching this video right now have recently subscribed to my channel. I just want to say hey, thank you so, so much. You don't know how much it means to me, but do know that it means a lot. <laughs> you guys really make my day. I love seeing your comments. I love seeing you react to me on Instagram or on Twitter. It makes me really, really happy. I just want you to know that. So that is what I wanted to say before talking about the books that I read in April. At first, I didn't want to make a wrap-up video because I also have my Owls Part 2 reading vlog coming up. So this is actually like a big spoiler for the books that I may have finished during my Owls. Within like a week or something, I will be uploading that vlog. It just takes a long time to edit and I have full-time uni going on right now. Actually, this Friday on May 8th, I have a final and I should be studying. I'm kind of digging my own grave right now. <laughs> but let's just get into this wrap up, let me answer the question first of whether I finished my owls or not. For the owls, I wanted to become a trader of magical tomes and I needed to complete four challenges and I'm trying to remember them all. History of magic, transfiguration, charms, and ruins? Is that what I had to do as well? But before I wanted to start my owls, I still needed to finish one book and that is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, the first book in the Six of Crows duology and oh boy did I enjoy this book. This is a five out of five star read for me and it is one of the very few epic fantasy stories that I've read in a while. I guess that you all know what this book is about but I will still talk a little bit about it. So in this story we follow six very morally gray characters who all have kind of different and most of the times troubled pasts who need to come together in order to do this really awesome heist. And that's all that I want to say about it. All of the people talk about this in the book community. I think that the hype is well deserved for this book. I fell in love with all of the characters kind of immediately. <laughs> They've all stolen my heart. Because they are not perfect characters, I think that makes them even more human. And the heist itself was really action-packed. I was constantly on the edge of my seat and I just highly, highly enjoyed it. So a five out of five star for me, I only needed to read like 90 pages at the beginning of April to finish this one. Plus this edition is just absolutely stunning. Then it was time to finally start my owls. For charms, you needed to read a book with a white cover. And for that, I chose Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a YA murder mystery book is I think how you would classify it. But I would definitely not say that it is a normal, typical murder mystery book where you need to kind of slowly figure out who the killer is. It is much more of a revenge revenge murder story, dare I say? I don't know. We have two different perspectives in this book. One of them is Sadie, whose 13-year-old sister has recently been murdered and she's trying to find the person who she thinks has killed her little sister. Ever since she's been trying to do that, she has gone missing. And now comes the second perspective into play and that one is of West McRae and he's given the project to make a podcast about Sadie's disappearance and West McRae is kind of finding out all these weird little details. It is kind of like a cat and mouse game. West trying to find Sadie and you follow what happens along the path for both of them. So whilst reading this book, I listened along to the audiobook and let me tell you, that is a gem of an audiobook. It has an amazing cast of voice actors, which made it seem like so, so real as if it was happening in the moment right now. I wasn't completely satisfied by the end. I think that's mainly because I was expecting to get one thing from this book while I didn't really get that, but that didn't lessen my enjoyment of this story because I felt like so on the edge of my seat the whole time, just with Six of Crows, but in a different kind Kind of area. Six of Crows was just super action-packed and with this one it's just like the suspense and like what are these characters gonna do and Sadie felt like a very unreliable narrator. When you pick this book up don't expect this to be your classic murder mystery novel. It's not but it is really good. I personally really liked it and I gave it four out of five stars. My second read for the owls and that is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. Rowling, don't know how to say this in American English but this is the illustrated edition. I had already 
already started this book sometime last year, but I reread that bit of the book and then continued on with the story. And I really get why this is a lot of people's favorite book. Until so far of the three books that I've reread in English again, this is definitely my favorite. Oh, Lupin, he is amazing. <laughs> I just love Lupin so, so much. He's my favorite element in this book. He is the best defense against the dark arts teacher. You cannot argue that. And I also really, really loved it that Harry, Hermione, and Ron finally went to Hogsmeade. Hogsmeade? Hogsmeade? Is that how you say it? In my first vlog of the owls, I constantly said Hogsmeade. That is just my English struggle sometimes of being a non-native English speaker. It just gives such amazing vibes. The movie of this book was one that when I was a kid, I really didn't understand like what was happening at the end as well with Sirius and stuff like that. I was so confused. And whenever I read this book again, I'm like, oh yeah, that's why Sirius is a-okay. <laughs> of course I love this one and I really love reading these books in English right now because then I fully get the word jokes, the puns that are in here as well and oh my god I just love this book so much so definitely a five out of five stars. Now um spoiler for my reading vlog I changed my TBR like half of it. Surprise surprise I don't think so I'm a huge mood reader and I love contemporary and my TBR for the owls were only fantasy books and my heart could not handle it like I was kind of freaking out. So I read Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban for Transfiguration because, spoiler, Lupin can change into a werewolf as well as Sirius who can change into, I believe, a regular wolf? Question mark. Initially, Harry Potter was my read for History of Magic, which was a book that needs to contain witches or wizards. So I changed my TBR and for that prompt, I read The Tales of Beetle the Bard. This is the Dutch copy and I hope you can see it. These are spider webs on the cover if you kind of move it, which I think is so cool. I'd never read this book. And to be honest, I didn't really have any expectations just because I didn't know what to expect, but also I didn't want to be disappointed by this book. So having no expectations was great. I read this in like two to three hours. Hours. I loved it. The stories were so much fun and the thing that I love the most about the tales is that Dumbledore gave his own commentary after each of the little like fairy tales and it was so much fun and I laughed out loud a couple of times just because ah, I love Dumbledore so much. <laughs> He's just such a funny old man and very wise overall and I love this book. I think I gave it a four out of five stars but I'm not too sure. I just highly enjoyed it and it was a quick read. Instead of reading Crooked Kingdom for Ancient Ruins which you needed to read a book with a heart on the cover, I changed it to a contemporary book just because I needed it, okay? <laughs> I mean like changing my TBR or sticking to it and then getting into a reading slump the choice is made for me. <laughs> and the only contemporary book that I owned, which had like a pretty decently big heart on the cover, was How Hard Can Love Be by Holly Bourne. This is the second book in the Spinster Club companion novel trilogy. Before this book, I read two of her other ones and that one was Am I Normal Yet? The first book in this trilogy, which I loved so much. If you want mental health, OCD, representation, not describing it well, but gonna stick to it, and just amazing feminist friendships, then you need to absolutely read that book. Plus I also read The Manifesto on How to Be Interesting by her, which I really disliked. Don't read that book. And then I read this gem and I highly, highly enjoyed it. It had some amazing messages in it as well. In this book, we follow Amber and I'd say like a trigger warning if you cannot handle alcoholism and drinking problems because that is like a really big part of this story. Amber's mother has left Amber in England. This is the summer where Amber is gonna go to America to visit her mother again. And Amber is gonna have some working experience on the camp that Amber's mother and her now husband own. And Amber meets the prom king Kyle over there. And he is supposedly a serial heartbreaker, but Amber still kind of falls for him. I love Holly Bourne's writing style. She writes stories in a really funny way, but she brings her point across so very well. Unfortunately, I did feel like the ending was quite rushed in this book. I would have liked to see more after what happened at the ending and if you've read this book I think you can kind of see where I'm coming from I just wanted a bit more closure at the end of the story until like three-fourths of the way through this was a five-star read for me because some problems that happened earlier in the book were resolved later on but the ending just 
kind of made it like, it left kind of a bittersweet aftertaste in my mouth. So I think I would give this one a 4.25 out of five stars. It was really good and I cannot wait to read the last book in this trilogy. Then I received Yellow by Chelsea Wee, if I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, Chelsea. She is a friend of mine here on booktube or at least she made booktube videos in the past and she created this beautiful poetry collection called Yellow and she sent it to me for free, which was just way too sweet because I definitely wanted to support this wonderfully self-published work. This is a poetry collection all about learning how to love yourself in regards to many different topics. In Chelsea's case, it is mainly about her heritage, but also about self-love regarding your body and being in relationships. It was a really beautiful poetry collection and I gave this one four out of five stars. And in the future, I will definitely just be like going through it again and marking my favorite poems. So those were the six books that I finished in April. I actually forgot that I read a seventh book. Why did I forget that? I also read We Should All Be Feminist by, oh my God, now comes her name, which I'm definitely gonna mispronounce, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. If I'm saying that correctly, I don't know, but I listened to this on audiobook because I still had a couple of days left on my free script, script, scribed audiobook account. So I listened to that. It was like 45 minutes of just a really amazing feminist essay. Like I can't really say what it's about, but it's just her writing such a beautifully written essay about why we should all be feminist and she brings across a couple of really beautiful points but also some things that were very frustrating but in a good way because it motivates us I think to think even more about equality between men and women and remember people feminism is not about man hate or anything like that it is about being equal so males and females are the same so yeah I wanted to say that but I actually read seven books in April like I didn't fully read seven books, but I finished seven books and I read six with also like kind of poetry and short stories and stuff like that. But April was a really great reading month, but I'm also currently reading two different books, which I will talk about in the next little clip. <laughs> it was such a good decision of mine to not read another fantasy book because I am now currently reading Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo and I'm finally getting more into the story. I'm like 150 pages in and I feel like things are starting again. I really love the introduction of this book. I'm kind of scared and nervous to see what's gonna happen to my babies, but I'm so excited to go along with them on this adventurous ride. But at the same time, I was also feeling like reading another book, which is kind of a spoiler for my May book haul if I'm doing one. And that is The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. I think if you've been a while on booktube, you definitely recognize the title of this book, but this is basically about Harry. And as you can kind of tell from the title, he has lived many lives because every single time that he dies, he goes back to his childhood and kind of like relives his entire life. During his 11th life, a girl comes next to his bed and she says, I nearly missed you, Dr. August. She says, I need to send a message. This is the story of what Harry does next and what he did before and how he tries to save a past he cannot change and a future he cannot allow. I've literally only read 18 pages in this book, but the chapters are really short, which I love. <laughs> I don't know why, but if I have a book with short chapters, I read much more than when a book has like chapters that are 30 pages long. It's just my mental struggle in my head. <laughs> Until so far, the writing has been really beautiful, but sometimes because English is not my first language, I do need to reread certain sentences to kind of get the structure again and to fully comprehend it. This premise intrigues me so much. Like I want to see what is going on like maybe the question will not be answered like why he is reliving all of his lives but i think it's just so interesting and i want to see how claire north is working out this idea so these are the two books that i'm currently reading and that was my april wrap up so yeah i successfully finished my owls yes i'm now a trader of magical tomes and i cannot wait for the second part of the magical readathon which be all about the nudes but i believe that's happening in august so we shall see how that is is gonna go. If you've read any of the books that I talked about today, let me know in the comments down below. I'm very curious to see what your opinions are and then we can discuss them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. If you want to follow me on all of my different social media pages because I'm a booktuber, of course I have Goodreads, but I also have Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, 
plus any email address. Links to those will all be in the description bar down below as well. And thank you so, 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 so much for watching this video. Your support means the world to me. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!